Hey, shalom, shalom. Let's start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rahakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and tell me this truth. Shalom to the Bayad Dawada. And Shalom to the sincere Agwathium who are staying in order according to the scriptures. To you all, I say Shalom. I'm the brother Shemayim from the Diligent Soldier Camp out here in Boston, Mass. And I pray to Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai that this lesson is edifying to the elect. All right. I don't know what exactly the title is going to be about, uh, the title is going to be of this lesson. You know, um, I'll figure it out at the end. But this lesson has to do with the brotherhood, you know, friendship, the bond, trust, you know. And this walk of ours, you know, it's not easy. We go through, we go through ups and downs in the brotherhood. We go through disagreements. You know, um, you get rebuked. You know, when I say you, I mean all of us, including myself. You know, um, we also go through uh, ups and downs. You know, out out of the brotherhood in our own in our own you know uh, in our own life on a regular basis, right? That being said, you know, um, there's nothing more comforting than to break bread with the brotherhood. I remember, you know, um, me and the brother Lahab, you know, the camp, the the heck, the ham, the head, so like the head, uh, camp leader, you know, where I'm at, the legion soldiers. Me and the brother Lahab, you know, uh, we used to always used to we always used to say when we used to go to the Boston, the Boston camp where our elders are, you know, uh, our elders and then our, our other elder brothers, you know, if you will. Uh, and we used to say, man, like we go through we go we going through hell the whole week. And then when we join on on, you know, on Sunday. We used to go to their camp on Sunday, you know, um, that it was like a recharge in the spirit. Like, right, we, we're going through hell. We're going through ups and downs on a regular life, you know, uh, dealing with Esau, dealing with, with our woman, dealing with, with demons, you know, our own family going against us. And then... We come to camp, and it's like a faith booster. It's like a recharge on our battery pack, if you will. You know, we get lifted, you know, um, in the spirit. You know, we find comfort in each other. We're able to express, you know, our our uh, situation that we're going through, depending on how much, you know, you, you, you share with the brother, you know. But... It's good when you were with people with the same spirit, with the same uh mindset, right? Um, with the same goal, which is to get this penny, which is to seek the kingdom first. Right? That being said, man, the brotherhood is very important. Okay, the brotherhood is very important, and we we gotta cherish the brotherhood. Okay. We have to cherish the brotherhood. We can't we can't take it for granted, man. We can't take it for granted. This is the the book of um Ecclesiasticus chapter chapter six, if I'm not mistaken. Come on, chapter six. Uh let's go to verse 14. It reads, A faithful friend is a strong defense. And he that has found such and one has found a treasure. So a faithful friend, man, is a strong defense. Physically, you know, and spiritually, man. I know for a fact, you know, the brothers I break bread with, the ones that I go out in the highways and byways, 
that we care for each other, that we have each other's back. If anything will go down, you know, we're going to be in there to defend one another. You know, we have gone through ups and downs. We have gone through disagreements. We have gone through rebuke and we still together as a family. You know, and on top of that, we the number one important thing is that we all fear Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, which is important. All right. Uh, let me see. Is there a verse that speaks on that? Let me just continue. Con, there is. Let me continue on 14, right? Uh, oh, speaking on that strong defense, right? There is a verse that speaks about, you know, that we fear the Lord. Speaking on, um, Verse 14, a faithful friend is a strong defense spiritually as well because we are all one body, you know. Let me see there's a precept on that. Right, 1 Corinthians 12. Chapter 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and many members, and all the members of one body, being many, are one body, so also is Hamashiach. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be whether we be bound or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot, verse 15, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of, is it therefore not of the body? Right. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole, if the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? See, and these, these, these precepts are very uh, straightforward, you know. But now has God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it has pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are ye many members, yet but one body. And that's the point, you know, that all of us have been given a portion you know, uh, according to our faith, man. You know, all of us been given that talent, that pound, that light, according to our faith. And the Lord is the one that does the increase. We're all supposed to increase in this thing, right? You can't just work on one body part. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not. A, uh, trust me, I need to get in shape. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to make like I'm a body a bodybuilder. But, you know, I'm pretty sure you can't just work on one arm and not the other. Or you can't just work on the arms and not the legs. See, there's there's a balance to things, man. You're out here lifting heavy and not working on the legs. Your legs are going to cave in. Right? So every every part of the body is important. And every member of the body makes the whole body. Okay, and we are all one in Hamashiach. Okay, uh, verse 21 says, And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, 
and our uncommonly parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Okay? Now, what does, what does schism mean? Let's look up the word schism. Search for Google. The word schism, a split or division between strongly opposed sections or parties caused by differences in opinions or belief. See, they can't, they cannot be any schism in the body, man. We all have an important role. Right, no matter uh how much uh how great that portion is or how little that portion is, everybody has that part, and we all have to do our part. And I'm including myself, man. I I can be doing more for the body, right? If I'm that finger, if I'm that finger, and and I'm not doing what I need to, you know, I'm, I'm putting more work on on the thumb. I'm putting more work on the pinky. You know, I'm putting more work. I'm putting more, uh, 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 I'm allowing for more work to be placed or more, you know, uh, yeah, I'm allowing for more work to be put on the other hand. See, whatever the case is, man, if you, if you climbing something, let's use that as an example. You know, we all have to do our part in the body. That goes, that goes with knowing your lot. Knowing what 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 part you are in the body, you know, because ultimately, man, we all seek in the kingdom. We are we are all seeking the kingdom, man. We are all seeking the kingdom. All right, so we all gotta do our part. Right, not thinking that I'm better than him or 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 he's better than me. We all doing our part, man. And we all gotta pray to the Lord to to give us an increase. There can be no schism, man. We all have to believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. We all have to fear the Lord. We all have to know that we're doing our best to seek the kingdom, to do what the Lord requires of us, depending on what your lot is. Right? No, 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 uh, no hard feelings depending on which lot is, man. Who are we to say that that's not your lot, man, if the Lord revealed it to you? Right? Let's continue. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. Right, we shouldn't have no differences in opinion when it comes to the doctrine. Right? When it comes to the word of Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai, when it comes to the gospel. Now we have different opinions on sports, music, you know, woman, food, you know, different uh likes and dislikes. That's cool, man. You know, those are those are those are worldly things, man. Don't, those don't mean nothing, man. But when it comes to the gospel, we can't have no schism in the body, man. We got to all try to seek the Lord. OK. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. That's true, man. We all represent each other, man. In my camp, man, we all represent each other. Each one of us represent, we represent each other, man. That's what we got to be trying to, that's what we got to uh, be blameless in this thing. For ye are the body of Hamashiach and members, and members in particular. Right? So we have, we have a, a, a we have a duty as men of the Lord, as watchmen, as prophets, right? To preach his gospel, which is, goes into good news, good tidings, 
to feed the flock. Right? So we all got to do our parts therein. I can't let the brother Lahav Malakwana Yam walk the walk for me. We all got to do our parts, man. We all got to strive. We all got to keep fighting this good fight of faith. You know, and then this is where the brotherhood comes in. Because we all care for each other. We care for each other. We acknowledge that we all we all different men. That the Lord chose us, Lord willing. You know, this goes down from the head apostles. You know, this goes all the way to the head apostles and down our elders, man. And everybody that's in the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh, Shai. We are all one body, man. Right? We are all one brotherhood. So let's go back to Ecclesiasticus 6 and 14, or also known as the Book of Sirach. A faithful friend is a strong defense. Yes. Right? If we all doing the work, if we all doing our part, we're going to be strong in this thing. You see? If we in the highways and byways, and and uh, for some reason, you know, the Lord puts the Spirit on me to forget a certain word or forget a certain scripture, He's gonna make. He's gonna put the spirit on another brother to come out with that scripture. Another brother to come out with with, with that word that you were thinking. We are a, we are a stronger defense. We trust each in each other. We care for one another. We have each other's back. This is a brotherhood, right? This is a this is a a, a blood brotherhood. And what I mean by that. Because ultimately, all of us are still sons. We are sons of Jacob, man. This is why we are Yasharala. This is why our last name is Yasharala. We are the prince of the power. Who's that power? Yahweh. We are the princes of the power, man. We are the soon-to-be princes. You know, in Yahweh's kingdom. We're gonna be the we're gonna be the the kings and judges of the world to come under our heavenly Father Yahweh and His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai. A faithful friend is a strong defense, and he that has found such, and one has found a treasure. It's important, man, to cherish the brotherhood. It's very important. We can't forget about the brotherhood, man. You know, we can't we can't hold grudges. We're brothers, man. We can't hold grudges. We got to learn to forgive. You know, there's a scripture on that. This is Luke 17, 3 and 4. Take heed, Luke 17, chapter 3 to 4. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. So you got you to gotta forgive your brother, man. Sometimes you just got to take the low as well. Sometimes a brother might think that a person did him wrong, and in reality that person didn't do him wrong, and you just caught up in your feelings, right? You just caught up in your feelings, and then you start holding grudges towards a brother. Right? You got to use spiritual discernment and understand it. What are those brothers' intentions, man? Does that brother really care about the Lord? Does that brother really fear the Lord? Is that brother uh, pushing this truth in sincerity? Right? And if he is, if he is doing that, then hey man, I might I might have to, you know, uh uh take that low and 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 let the Lord find my battle because I might be seeing it the wrong way, man. 
I might be seeing it the wrong way. I felt offended on something, and hey, man, you got to put the old man away. You got to put the old man away, man. You can't get offended just because a person talks to you in a certain tone. Listen, we men, we don't like to be speaking to a certain tone. We don't like to be wrong. But that's 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 also man of the world. And we can't be man of the world. We got to be man of the Lord. We got to learn to forgive a brother, man. Right? Let's see. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh, let me see. This is not what I was looking for. That's not what I was looking for. That is a powerful uh, precept uh, in general, but that's not uh, what I was looking for. Right, Second Ezra 14 and 14, and it reads, Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. See, that's a, that's a mortal thought, man. That's a weak nature. To, to, you know, uh, to feel offensive or hold a grudge because a man said to you and said something to you in a certain tone, you know, um, without understanding his, his, his feelings or, or his, uh, his reason and why, you know? It says, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy onto thee and, and hasty to flee from these times. Right. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happens, which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. You see, greater evils are coming. We got to put away the mortal thoughts and cast away the burdens of men. We got to put off that weak nature, man. We got to get focused. All right? Listen, man, a man of the Lord, if he's wrong, he's going to apologize. And he sincerely apologize. You got to learn to forgive that brother, man. You know? You got to learn to forgive that brother and keep fighting, man. Keep fighting this truth, man. We don't got time to be worrying about, you know, uh, schisms, man. Especially this, this time in the game, if you will. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen, which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. For lo, how much the world shall be weaker through age so much the more shall evil increase upon them that dwell therein. You see? Now... Let's go back to Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus 6, the book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse uh, 15. It says, Nothing doth countervail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. Okay? We got to put away the mortal thoughts, man. All right, we gotta we gotta put everything that we think, 
you know, either this man is older than me, like physically, or this man is younger than me physically. You know, this man speaks this type of way or, or any mortal thoughts, man. If the man is sincere and he fears the Lord and he's doing the work, right? And and and, and you can see this through your through your discernment, through your spiritual discernment, you cannot have any schism in the brotherhood, man. Every brother has a different walk of life. Every brother, every brother went through different things. We gotta be, we gotta be uh how do I word it? But anyways, every every brother went through has a different type of, of uh upcoming, if you will. They had a different type of upcoming. So everybody's different. But if that brother is sincere. And that brother is has fear the Lord. I keep mentioning this, right? Then we can't we can't hold grudges with brothers, man. We can't hold grudges, especially if a brother apologize, or or especially if 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 um if what the brother is is saying is 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 truth, right? The scriptures speak about that, right? Let me get that. And when I say the truth, I'm talking about the scriptures, man. Uh, Galatians 4 and 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? The certain brothers, man, that the, the spirit is dealing with them and they'll rebu rebuke you and tell you a certain scripture or tell you this is not how we're supposed to be moving. And you can't take that. Uh, you can't be you can't take that. Uh, you can't take that personal, man. In a sense that you can't hold the grudge towards that brother, man. It's good for a man to 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 get to. Hey, man, we need order in this thing, man. Starting from the heads and down. You see, we we need order in this thing. It's very important for us to understand that. It's why we got camp leaders. Right, this is why we got a uh, uh, second in command. This is why we got third in command. This is why we have uh, uh, elders, right? Like we are the fruits of our elders in Boston, man. Those are our elders, and we take counsel of them, and we try to be blameless in this thing, man. Because ultimately, man, we're not trying to uh, bring shame to the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And we truly believe that the Lord, you know, uh, you, uh, how do I word it? The Lord, you know, um, chose these men, starting from the head, head, uh, uh, apostles down to our, our, held, our head elders, man. So if we believe that, man. We gotta, we gotta, uh, stay focused and we gotta, uh, know what we're fighting for. And, you know, um, Try to be blameless in this thing, man, because we don't want to we don't want to uh, bring shame to the Lord, man. Because if we believe that the Lord chose these men and and, and we going off and, and we doing whatever we want and we not in order. Listen, man, we, we're going to bring shame to our to our elders and ultimately to the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, man. You know? This is why the Lord left a brotherhood. This is why the Lord left an elect. Right? Nothing does countervail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. Let's see what the word uh, countervail means. Countervail. Offset the effect of something by countering it with something of equal force. Let's see. Stereotypes are countervailed by more realistic assentments. Offset the effect of something by countering with something of equal force. In other words, there's nothing greater, right? There's nothing, there's nothing greater 
than a faithful friend. Nothing countervails it, man. Something that overpasses a faithful friend. And his excellency is invaluable. Let's look at what the word invaluable is. Right, the word invaluable means extremely useful and in indispensable, crucial, critical, key, vital, irreplaceable, man. And that's true. That's true. There's no other man that I would love to to you know uh risk my life than than for the man of Yahweh by Shimmy Shai, especially the brotherhood, the ones that I break bread with, man. You know. Nothing does countervail a faithful friend, and his excellency is invaluable. A faithful friend is is the medicine of life. It truly is, man. This is what I was going back to the point that we're going through we're going through uh worldly things on the regular basics. And when we get together with the brother, it's like we get that peace of mind. We get that recharge. We get that comfort. We truly comfort each other. We start speaking to each other about what we're going through. We start bringing our scriptures to comfort each other, right? We start reminding each other what what we're fighting for, and what's and what and what we're gonna gain, and we keep and we keep fighting. You see, a faithful friend is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find Him. See, this is going to what I was mentioning in the beginning of the of the of the uh, lesson, man. It's important for a man to fear your how by shimmy out shy. It's very important. The, the scriptures speak about what happens when you fear the Lord, right? And here it's telling you that if you fear the Lord, you shall find a faithful friend. The scriptures always also speak about how if you fear the Lord, you're gonna get wisdom and knowledge. You see, so it's important for you to fear the Lord, man. And the Lord is going, is going, is going to uh, bless you with the brotherhood. You see, it's very important. Man. We are all one. We are all part of the of that one body, man. We're just different members, but we gotta know what we're fighting for, man. We can't take things personally, man. And this walk of ours, we can't take things personally. Right? Let's get this scripture. It's the book of First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 20. It says, Them that sin rebuke before all, that others may fear. Let me see. First Timothy 5 and 20, right? Right, First Timothy five and twenty, them that sin, rebuke before all, that others also may fear. You know, so there's protocols in this thing, man. If you're if you're transgressing the law, and then you're sinning, you're gonna get rebuked, right? So that so that you can you can learn, so that you can know what you're doing wrong. And you're going to get rebuked, you know, uh, in front of everybody, not in the sense that we're trying to, uh, we're trying to belittle you, you know, all depends on the situation, man. It's not wrong with speaking to a brother one-on-one, -on -one. depending on the situation, the time and place, you know, what the occasion is, you know, but there's times that you just rebuke a brother before all, you see a brother's doing something. And then you just surrounded by people, but you're like, yo, what are you doing, bro? Nah, you can't do that. The Lord don't allow that. That's not cool with the Lord. Right? You rebuke before all. Now, even if a brother is not sinning, but he's just out of order, you still have to rebuke that brother, man. 
right? Because ultimately, man, the, if, if the Lord is the one that set up his men. So the Lord set up men in this order in this thing, right? It doesn't mean that you can just do what you want. And this this lesson is not for no one in particular, man. This lesson is for everybody that's listening sincerely to understand that the brotherhood is important because, because it don't matter if I gone through a situation or not, I'm not the first one. Every brother that been this truth started from the head of apostles and down have seen how a lot of men that say their brothers are not true brothers, man. How a lot of men that 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 uh said that they were brothers fell off. Right? And then what happens, man? A demon comes upon that person, man. They start going against the, the body. And they still think the truth, they still think that that the Lord is dealing with them. They still uh preaching the word. You know, they're still doing sit down, they're still going to house and bowers on the, on themselves, but then they're always trying to like, you know, uh uh uh, slander a brother. All right, let's see what the word slander means. The action or crime of making a false spoken statement damaging to a person's reputation. And that's an eat of my trait, man. That's an eat of my trait. All right? Listen, man, rebuke is very important. Rebuke is very important in the brotherhood. We cannot take nothing personal. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, chapter 9, right? Reprove not a scorner, as he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. You see? Listen, man, I got rebuked plenty of times. And I thank you, how about Shemmy Hasha for putting these men in my life, man, for rebuking me. And and it's not even rebuke like I'm sinning. It's just, it can be, you know, it can just be anything, man. The water, how about Shemmy Hasha, that hasn't been a huge issue, you know, where I'm going off. But I've been rebuked before, man. Right? The Lord has set up men above me for a reason. Now, are those men better than me? No. Are those men less than me? No. Are we all striving for that same penny? Yes. Are we all seeking the kingdom? Yes. So why do I see this is the thing, man? I don't I don't take none of I don't you can't we can't have mortal thought. We gotta be spiritual in this thing. Rebuke a wise man, he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. You see? Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me, thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. Are you don't, people, you don't want to be found a scorner, man. All right, you want to be right with the Lord. You want to be right with the Lord and understand the Lord set 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 a brotherhood up, man. All right, listen, look, look, let's get this scripture right. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter four, and this is not Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiastes, chapter four, verse ten. For if they fall. Uh, okay, so I got to start at verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, and it reads, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Right? A good friend. A good friend. What did the book of Ecclesiastes said, right? A good friend is a medicine to life. A good friend is a, is a, a strong defense. A good friend is a strong defense, right? So let's go back to verse uh, 9. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. 
for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. A good friend's a good defense. Someone that's lifting you up is a good defense. Look, man, physically, if you fall, I'm going to lift you up. That's a good defense. But this is talking about spiritually, man. Right? Uh, let me prove this. This is the book of Proverbs 24 and 16. It says, for a just man falleth seven time and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. You see, so a righteous man falleth seven time. Listen, man, we all fall. We all fall, man. It happens. For you to say you don't fall, man, then you you just over righteous. And you lying to yourself. We all fall, man. Listen, man, the, the Lord makes us fall sometimes just to humble us. You understand how the Lord works, man. This knowledge puffs us up, man. And the Lord makes us fall sometimes just to humble us, man, and be like, ah, right, you know, know that, know that I'm your power. Not that we forget who our power is, but it's just a way for the Lord to humble us, man. Listen, man, the scriptures speak about how, how, uh, um, uh, uh, that you see, let me see if I can get it. Uh, is it also in the book of Ecclesiastes? Let me see. Let me see, where was I? Let me see. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Uh, Sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. See? So sorrow is better than laughter. For by the sadness of the countenance, right? The heart is made better, man. So when the Lord humbles you, Right now, you're more serious. You're not in that laughing matter, right? You're 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 more you're you're more serious. You're more focused. You're going through certain sorrows. It says, "For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better." Now your heart is made better. Now you can see clearly. You can understand more. Seven. Let me see. Right. Look at verse five. It is better to so Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse five. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools, man. So rebuke is part of this walk, man. And we need this rebuke, man, because ultimately we all need salvation. We all need this redeemer. We all need the Lord. So we're not perfect, man. We striving for perfection. You know, this is why we pray to the Lord not to remove the spirit in us, to remove uh, uh, the, the Rakak Wadash with the Holy Spirit from us, you know. We pray that the Lord keeps us, you know, uh, uh, strong in the faith, blesses us with the increase, allows us to endure unto the end, allow us to not to be a reprobate, allow us to know the truth, to keep giving us understanding. You know, and, and all this comes also from the brotherhood, man. The brotherhood is very important. We got to share this. All right, so where, where was I in Ecclesiastes chapter 4? It says, uh, verse 10, For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Right? Uh, a person becomes a reprobate, meaning... uh. uh Avoid a judgment, meaning that you you know everything. You don't you you don't gotta work on anything. You don't have your flaws and nothing. Right? So so now you're getting rebuke and you ain't taking it. You're like, I'm better off alone. 
And listen, man, this is not talking about brothers that are alone because there is brothers that are alone and not because because they're, they're, they're reprobates or because, you know, uh, they don't take rebuke because that's a lot that the Lord gave them. I know a brother that's teaching alone, man. All right. I know a brother that's teaching alone, man. And he comes to the Boston camp every Sunday faithfully, man. To the elders camp. And he goes to teach on Saturdays. It's not easy, man, to be out here alone. See, but the scripture, see, a, a, a simple person will, will think that this is talking about a man that is on his own. No, this is talking about a man that chooses to be alone, a man that is void of judgment. It's talking about a man that 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 is a scorner, a man that doesn't take rebuke, a man that is in his is 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 having these mortal thoughts. You see, it says, uh, verse uh, uh, what was I? I was in verse, I believe I was verse 10. For they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have a, they have a, they have a heat. Then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? And if one prevail against him, Two shall withstand him, you see, and a three threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's powerful, man. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. You see, so if someone over tries to come after him, two will withstand him. This is physically and spiritually why we're doing the work. And if threefold cord is not and a threefold cord is not uh quickly broken. Let's see what's a threefold cord. You know, um a cord of three stands represents God, the groom and the bride. Braiding these three, these three stands symbolizing the joining of one man, one woman, and God in marriage. By keeping the Lord at the center of marriage, his love will continue to grow and bind the couple together. So, hey, man, ultimately, the scriptures speak about this, right? Right. This is the book of uh Matthews 18 verse 19. Right. Again I say unto you that if if two of you shall agree um, Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Right there, man. That if two if, if two of you shall agree on the on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. The Lord is gonna have our backs, man. The Lord's gonna take care of it. The Lord's gonna hear our prayers. Okay, and when two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So you're better off having a, a and that brother that that goes and preaches out alone. He's not alone, man. He has a brotherhood. Everybody, the he is part of the body. Okay, he is part of the body, man. So he has he has me. He has my camp. He has the Boston camp. He has everybody that's that 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 preaches Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, man. We all have a lot, man. So it's not good to be alone. All right? And a three-four cord is not quickly broken, man. You're not gonna be broken if you if you have if you have three. Right? 
You're not going to be broken if you have two. If, if one prevails against him, two shall withstand. So two can hold on one. And if a three cord is not, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Now, let's go back to uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter uh, six, and we're going to finish off, right? Where was I? Uh, we're going to go back to verse 16. A faithful friend is is the medicine of life, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. You see? For as for as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. So if you fear the Lord, the Lord is gonna direct your friendship aright. So same as if if you fear in the Lord, the Lord's gonna do the same thing for your for your neighbor, for your friend. He's gonna direct thy friendship aright. All right? Listen, man. The brotherhood is important. The brotherhood is really important, and we got to understand one thing, okay? We got to understand that we are about our Father's business. This is the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 49. And it says, and he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my Father's business? And they understood not the sayings which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. For his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Yahweh shall increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. See, we got to be about our father's business. And this is how that we are going to increase, how the Lord increased. We are going to increase as well. Right, we're gonna increase in wisdom and stature. Okay, we gotta be our father's business, man. Let's see. Yeah, this is when his mother and his father were looking for Yahweh Shai. This is beautiful, man. We got to be about our father's business. Truly, this is the most important thing. Right? Who is my mother and who is my brother? He that does the will of my heavenly father, man. He that does the will of my father. Okay? Cherish the brotherhood. You know? I pray that this lesson was edifying to the elect. Let's give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone GMS who rule one time in this truth. Shalom to the Bayat Dawada and Shalom to the sincere Aquathium who are staying in order according to the scriptures. To you all, I say Shalom and Lord willing, on to the next one.